Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Perry Gordon Scottish. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I weave a Widowmaker Paracord bracelet. All right, we're not going to be doing the stitching in this video. There will be two follow-up videos to come that show each aspect of the stitching. But here's some examples of some one, some that I have done in the past. This one is let's see, Colonial Blue, and the accent is Cascade. Okay, here's one. This is smoke gray with acid purple, and all the stitching is done in imperial red. Okay, now the one we're going to do today is this one right here. This is black and a really dark gray called anthracite, and the stitching is done in charcoal gray. Now, like I say, we're not going to show the stitching in this video. We're simply going to do the weave. The stitching will be in two follow-up videos. But if you want to see how I do this, then stick around because we will get right to it. Okay, weavers, I'm back and I'm set up and I'm ready to go. But before we get started, as always, I gotta give a shameless plug. Okay, this is a stitched Ultron maroon. Blackish gray down the middle and charcoal gray. I'll leave the link to the tutorial for the bracelet and a separate tutorial for the stitching in the cards and the description below. Now this is a inverted Zalbar that I have stitched. I have a tutorial on this one also. I'll leave it in the cards and the description below. Okay, now Let's see. With that said, what we're going to do today is a widow maker. I'm going to eventually stitch it, which will be another video, but for, t for now, we're simply going to learn how the to do the bracelet itself. This is a pretty basic bracelet. It's not very hard. Um, if you're new to this, this would be, you know, one that you could try out. Um, once you've done the cobra and the fishtail and the trilobite and you're looking to do something a little bit more advanced this would be it. And the only reason I say um, that it's a little advanced is because it has an offset working and that's what I call it. I've heard people call it other things. I just simply call it an offset working in. Um, okay, but before I get to that, let's give credit where credit's due. The original design of the Widowmaker is by Jason Lake. He has a Instagram profile, um, Lake Bros Paracord on Instagram, and I'll leave the link to that below. Uh, check out his channel, follow him. He's got a whole bunch of pictures, and some of them are even pictorials for various designs he has come up with. Okay, let's see. What's next? <coughs> I'm putting this one on a 15 millimeter or a 5 8 inch equivalent buckle. Um, let's see. And like I said, about the core, it's a four strand core, but it's an offset working in. If you're unfamiliar with that or how to set it up, check the description below. There's a link to a core setup playlist, and there is a, uh, a dedicated tutorial on how to set this up. But I'll give you the short and skinny of it right here. Basically, you set up your four string core like you normally would, but instead of having two even working ends coming out at the top that you're going to weave with, this one you offset all the length to one side because you're only going to be working at one side. But like I've said in some of my other videos, some of you may know, some of you may not, you have this other end here. And the reason I leave it long like this is so that when I, after I finish the bracelet, I can come back and attach my fid lacing needle and what I'll do is I'll back weave it down into the back side of the bracelet right but in order to be able to use the fid you got to have it long enough that the fid will be able to fold back over itself and you can get it because if it was too short you wouldn't be able to manipulate that fid in there that's why I leave it long like that okay 
Alright, now, now normally what I do when I have something like this, just so it's not in the way when I begin weaving, I have, I use like one of these little office supply paper clip looking things. I don't know what you actually, the technical name of this is, but you know what it is. It, or anything would work. But I'll just take it, and I'll put it up there, and it just kind of clips it out of the way as I work. Right? Okay. Set that one up. Your full string core, like I said. And the way I usually do it, as I start with this knot at the top, do the hitch here, do the hitch in the center, come down, do this hitch, and go up, and right there. Make sense? Okay, now your accent cord is, oh, let me say this. I always, I always forget to do this. Black, and the accent is anthracite, which is a very dark gray. It's one, it's darker than charcoal gray, um, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's darker than charcoal gray, but it's not the darkest gray that is on the market, as far as I know. But it's dark enough that it keeps the bracelet a dark motif, but there's enough of a contrast between the two black and anthracite that you can distinguish between the two colors. Okay? Now, with that said, all you do for your accent, it's even. Both ends of it are even and I've simply ran it through the back side of that middle cow hitch the way I do a four strand core okay but just run it through the back right now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you how to do this it's not a hard weave at all um if you just be mindful do it it's pretty simple there's not any you know multiple steps in each repetition where you have to tighten the knot up in sections. It's not like that. It's pretty simple. The only advanced factor about this is the offset working in. Once you can set one of them up, you can pretty much do one of these. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you. I've said this in some of my past videos. Um, we often hear about... Here's your, here's your tip. Here's your little... Uh, uh, something stick this in your brain housing group just the way I think of these things you often hear people want to know how do you set it up or your core set up you always hear people refer to setting up to begin the weave well if you stop and you think about it there's actually two parts to that not only do you have your your core set up you also have what I would call your cord orientation Meaning, you you set it up, you put your accent cord however you're going to do it, but then you have to orientate to get your cords where you want them in order to actually begin the weave. Because you can do it multiple ways, and it will cause the finished product to look slightly different. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see. Okay, here's one I've done. If we can see this, okay, what we got here here is, what is this? Is this colonial blue, I think? Colonial blue, and the accent is, it's called Cascade. Okay, and if you look, I have ran that accent through all the loops at the top, and it comes out right here at the top, and it comes across over the top right there, okay? And when I made that, I was like, well, I don't really like it set up that way. Right, I'm, you take into consideration what the weave is actually going to do, the overs and the unders, and I changed that slightly. And here's what I come up with. Here's one that I've done that's stitched. Right, now this is smoke gray, acid purple, and it's all the stitching is done in imperial red. Okay, now on this one, it doesn't. You don't notice it so much because all the cords kind of have a blue hue to all of them and these two that come wrapping around this out, outer edge they don't stand out as much right okay now imagine if you do it on something like this where the purple and the gray have this real stark contrast you're going to see that purple come wrapping around and it's not going to look right so what i ended up doing is instead of wrapping them around the outside edge i, I did it only through this center cow hitch at the top, not the two side knots. And it's just hanging out. 
But what we do in order to orientate our chords, and this one is pretty simple. We're going to take the two. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Like I say, I know it's hard to see, but there's one cow hitch right here in the center. Right? The cord runs to the back side of it, the accent cord. What you're going to do is you're just going to come up with the one on this side. You're going to go through that first slot and bring it up through that first slot. And the one on the other side, you're going to do the same thing on this respective side. So on the right side, you're going to come up through that first slot up coming from the right side. And that is going to get your chords orientated in the right place. Now you, you could you could run this accent cord through the front of this cow hitch, but then what'll happen again is you'll have that color being more visible through that cow hitch front through the back side. It usually hides it. Now small things I see, you know, I kind of modify and change a little bit. But you can do it either way. But I would recommend bringing, you know, your respective sides up through the slots on its respective side. Make sense? And then you get them up out of the way. You just kind of move them out of the way so we can start the weave. Okay, now, this is how we're going to do this. This is one of those, because it's an offset working in, it's one of those that you weave from one side to the other and then back you ebb and you flow back and forth that's the rhythm of this bracelet from one side to the other right so every time you weave one side you use you use one chord one accent chord and then when you are gonna change directions and come back you use the other chord so this this is con you're constantly switching between these two but this one gets used every repetition. Makes sense? Okay, so here's how I'm going to show you how to do this. It's pretty simple. Like I say, you take the main working end of your core strand. Now, I went ahead and put fids on all this. Hopefully, it'll make it more easily visible to you, the viewer, and it'll help me actually weave this a little bit faster than normal. Okay, went ahead and put my fid on there. Like I say, you got full working, full core strand. What you're going to do is you're going to go over three and under one and pull the majority of your excess through All right, leave you a little room up here because this is what we got to work with okay now that we've already got our accent cord orientated to where we want it you find the end of it and I'll say this just a little tip, I guess. When you're the core strand of your working in is on this side, and you go over three and under one toward this direction, you use the accent on that side, right? And when you do it the other from the other direction, the next repetition because I, the main working in is on this side, and you go the other direction. That's when you use the other working in of your accent. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, whichever way, wherever that accent, or the main working in is, that's the side you use the accent. Just a way to remember, keep you from getting confused. Okay, so we take the left working in of the accent cord. We find the end of it, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. What you're going to do, I'm going to do this all in one step, but I'll just show you. You're going to take the end of this. What you're going to do is from that same side, because that's where it's on, that's where the working in for the main core strand and the accent, they're both on this left side. You're going to go over three and down through that slot right there. Okay. Now pay attention so we can see this. I'm going to move this out of the way so you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the excess through and then I'm gonna come back the direction we came from right we came over on the left side so then we're gonna go 
under these two middle core strands, the two center core strands, and then this first slot right here, we're going to come up through that. Okay? Now here's the trick. You're going to do it above, top, toward this buckle where we started, right? When I say above, I mean toward the buckle. Above this main core working end, or, yeah, the core strand of the main, the working end of the main core strand. There we go, right? But below the accent cord itself, because this is the same cord. This is the end of this cord. Right, so you're going to come in between those two in that first slot. And you're simply going to pull your excess through, making sure you don't have any twists. And when you get right here, that's it. Push everything up, and you can just pull. Pull this one straight out, pull this one up. Pretty simple. Just give it a little pull. And that's it. And now we're going to do the same thing from the other direction using the other side of the accent. Right? So, take the main working end that comes off the core strand, find the end of it, coming from the right, we go over three and under that last one. That, wait, let me say, did I say that wrong? Over three, yes, and then under the last one. <coughs> and obviously under this working end over here. And we pull the majority of our excess through, mindful of the twist. And again, just kind of get it up there like that. Okay, now, since the working end... From the, main, the core strand working in was on this side, the right side. We're going to do it with the right side accent working in. Find the end of it. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. We're going to come from this side. Go over those first three. And then down through the slot. Right. And then we're going to go back. Toward the end, the in the side we came from, which would be the right side, but we're going to go under the two center core strands. And this first slot over here, we're going to come up through it, and just like on the other side, above the main working end, and underneath this one. The accent underneath itself, so to speak, in between those two. I'm going to pour our excess through. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's all this bracelet is. And you just repeat, rinse, or lather, rinse, repeat, right? All the way to the end. And then you just kind of push it up, pull it tight. And that's it. Now, do, I do it a few more times. Take our main working end coming off the core strand. Find the end. And you're going to go from the left, because that's the side we're working on. See how you have two cords over here, right? Your work, main working end, your accent. It's the side we're coming from, the left. So you're going to go over three and under one. Obviously, under here. And pull the majority of your excess through, mindful of your twist. All right? Since we, since we started from the left, we'll use the accent on the left. Okay. I would swing it over, kind of get it out of the way. That way, I know I'm going to go up under it. Okay. So. Just like the core strand, we're going to go over the first three, because we're coming from this side. Go over those first three, and down through that slot. And then 
back that direction under those two center core strands and up through this slot right here above toward the buckle above the main working in but below this like I say bring that across not like this not over here under it that way you're going in between and then you pull your excess through so how it's twisted right here get the twist out and then you just pushing it up and pulling it tight you can take it you you the accent you can pull it up that direction if you want kind of roll your thumb across the top of it to get out some of that excess and that's it that's all there is to it now we we'll do it again take our main working in and we go over three over three and under one over three under one under this one also pulling your excess through now since we're starting from this side we're going to use that accent okay to make it less confusing I'll show you how what I do take that and just kind of put it over there that way it's out of the way and you've got it where you need it to be right but since we're working from this end you take the end of it over here just like the working main working end we go over the over the first three and down through that slot but what we're going to do is we're going to come up through this slot above this working end and below the accent cord itself that we're using and since I'm using this fid which makes it a little easier I'll just stick it down through there and kind of angle it all angle it up and just do it all kind of in one motion and just pull it through push it up pull it tight and that's it take your main working in over three over three under one and yes under this one over here go under that one pull your excess through and again we do the same thing but now we're on this side so we take this one accent on this side get it out of the way and we're on this side so we're gonna go over those first three and down through there that first that slot and then we're gonna come back up through that first slot I'm kind of, I'm combining all them steps and that's what that fit that's why I say sometimes when you're doing these weaves it's actually sometimes easier to do it with the fit on it as opposed to do, doing it with your fingers because you, I can take that fit and just go like that and bam it's right through there and you just pull your slide through mindful of your twist push it up kind of pull it now we're on this side main working in over three under one and then under here I pull right. just kind of move it out of the way and find the end of it down through the first the slot right there on that side so you basically you're going over these three over three and down through that first slot and then I'll, I'll just angle that thing up back through that slot right there I just pull it now I'll show you something Now when you pull, when you go to pull these and tighten them up, this is where your tension consistency would come in. Pulling this, you need to, every time you pull this, when you finish the, the, the repetition, and you go to pull this end right here, the main working end, 
you have to pull it with the same amount of tension every time you do it it's here then it's gonna be over here then it's gonna be over here back and forth back and forth that way all these little wraparound pieces will be even if you pull like say for example I pull this one right here really 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 tight it's gonna pull this in in and then the next time I'm on this side I don't pull it this tight it's gonna stick out and you're gonna have boop, 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 boop. the edges are not gonna be straight and even that's why I talk about tension consistent you got to pull the same amount of tension every repetition and in some cases not so much in this one but it is a good habit to get into not only the same amount of tension but also in the same direction so if you pull this cord when you tighten it up however you pull it up toward that way now pull this one just straight out all right every time pull them the same way now obviously this was on this side it's gonna get pulled that direction but you have to pull them the same amount of tension and the same direction that way every knot looks the same that way you don't end up with your bracelet looking all bumpy and lumpy on the edges and that's what causes that right that's one of the things you have to pay attention to when you're when you're new to this the amount of tension and just look at it the one you're doing compared to the one you just did and the one you just did and just kind of look at it and you'll see but that's all there is to this one it's not that hard um now like always I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna just start weaving let you see what I'm doing maybe to help maybe it won't I don't know I know me when I watch these tutorials I watch their hands yes I listen to the mechanics over here and under there but I watch their hands and see how they do it and if there's anything they do that can help me speed the process up in making this combining the steps or you know just some technique that I've never seen in what they do makes sense so I'm gonna just back out and let you watch my hands for a second yeah, let's not back out too far All right. F3 under one finding this end going down up and you gotta bring that over so you go up under it yeah and this cord all that excess is getting caught on the bottom side of my jig the side see push it up and pull it tight every three under one pull the excess through right here so the first slot up under there and through right here pushing it up pulling it here pulling it here all right I do one more and then I'm gonna show you something this is related to the stitching three under one pull from this side take that accent working in from that side bring it across go down through the slot right here up through that first slot on this side and the slot all the way to this side and go up through there above that working end of the main core strand and below that and pull it through and that's it Make sure there's no twist in it. Push it up. Pull it tight. And that's it. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you this. But uh, I'm going to weave this out. When I get down to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish this one off. Now, now I won't do the final cut and burn because I am going to stitch this and that'll be for another video. But you can at least see how I do this and how I back weave everything into the back side of the bracelet. Okay. But let me zoom in and I'll show you this right here. Okay, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Instead of zooming in, I accidentally stopped recording. My bad. You didn't miss anything. Um, Let's see. Okay, zoom in so you can see this. 
Might not be able to see it very well on this because it is black and it, you don't see it very well. But what you end up having on this bracelet is these the pieces of the main working in the core string working in that are wrapping around this outer edge. What happens is you get this little gap in between each one of them, right? There's no way to get rid of it. That's the nature of this weave. That's the way this weave is supposed to look. So don't freak out and think, oh, it's not time. That's the way it's supposed to look. But that gives us opportunity to stitch it. I'll show you on this one. Maybe you can see it. Yeah. If I can get that to focus. But we see how you have these gaps in between there. Right? On either side. That gives you opportunity to just stitch right through there. Right? And I've said this in some of the past videos. There are certain places, you know, normally I and most people stitch with micro cord. But there are a few places where stitching with 95 is more beneficial. This would be one of them because of that big gap. It kind of it fills in the gap, but it's just that the thicker th thicker cord makes it more easy to see right here, All right? And you'll see. I'll show you on this one right here. See how that not that Imperial Red 95 has basically filled in that gap. Now you can still see that there's a gap, like right here above my fingernail. In a few places, you can still see that there's a gap there, but it pretty much it fills it in, right? So this would be one of those instances where stitching with 95 is a good thing. Now the stitching done in the in the middle right here, that's going to be a piece of micro, but the edges is, is 95, right? Okay. Now like I say. I'm going to weave this in out to the end, and when I get down to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how, how I back weave it and finish it off. But, stick around. Okay, weavers, I've got it weaved out to the end, and I'll show you how I finish this off. Okay, um, let's see. I'll say this. Something I try to do when you have like the accent type running in the middle, I try to not run the accent all the way to the bottom but instead with the main color the black I try to have a border right across the bottom that way it looks as if it's framed right up the sides the top and the bottom right and I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna attempt to do hopefully this will work now let's see let's see let's see okay I'll zoom in and I'll show you what I've got going on so far. I'm getting the light adjusted so you can see. Okay, what I've done is I've just weaved it out all the way to the end and I basically have no more room. But if you look close, right here on this side, we say that our our main working end, the one that come off the core strand, it's on this side, okay? And you still can see, I, you probably can't see it very well in this video, but you still see a little bit of that core strand showing there. And we try to cover that up and finish off this weave. Now on this side, you see just a little bit, but it's in line with the rest of the gaps, right? This gap over here where you can see that core strand is bigger, it's wider, than the rest of them come down through here. So we want to do something with that. But what we're going to do is this one accent piece, the last the last repetition right here, where the accent piece came over and it went down, I left it on there. I didn't bring it back up through the bracelet. I got it on the back side. For those who watch my videos, you know, I will put all the cords on the back side and back weave them and do the cut and burn. That way there's no burns on the front on the display side or the side of the bracelet. They're all on the non-display side or the back side of the bracelet, right? So we just leave that one there. We don't bring it back up. And this last one, what I'm going to do is I'm basically I'm going to kind of do it in reverse order, if you will. Instead of bringing this one over and having the accent go over the top of it like you we were doing, 
I'm going to do the accent first, and I'm going to run it down through those core strands just above this hitch in between those two core strands and just get it to the back side. Then I'll bring the main color working in across, and it'll create that, create that border that I'm speaking of. Right? Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. But these two core strands that are on this side, same place we you you've been running this cord down through the entire weave. Down here at the end, it's kind of tight, so you know if you have your fids, use them or hemostats. We're gonna get it down through there. Yeah, that went through there. See, come out the back, and we're just gonna pull it through, making sure there's no twist in it. Right, and that creates that last little crossover or V. Now that one's on the back side. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our main working end and we're just going to wrap it across the front. Right? Like that. And then this end is going to get back woven up into the back. Right? Now we'll figure out where we're going to back weave them in just a second. But we're just going to bring it across. That way it's going to close in this gap and create this little bit of border down here. Right? Okay. So now, let's say I'm going to back out. And I'll show you like I do in a lot of these videos. I, I seen somebody the other day make a comment on social media. A gentleman took a picture of his new jig, and it was a it was a wooden jig that he had bought, and you know a brand name. Um, and there's one gentleman that does not like that brand name or that company, and he made the comment that it's going to bow under the pressure, meaning when you go to tighten it up, it's going to bend, as opposed to the metal jigs he likes to use. They don't bend. Well, I get that. A wooden jig does bend. If you put enough pressure on it, it will bend. I get it. Um, mine does that, and I've designed mine that way, in fact. I was showing somebody my jig the other day. Now, like I say, my jig here, I'll back out so you can see this thing. My jig, it's not the prettiest thing. I don't claim it doesn't, you know, but it works. It does what I want it to do, okay? And I'll show you something that I, that I like about the way I've designed this one compared to the ones I see on the market that you can buy. The space in between here, the non-display side of the bracelet and the spine, if you will, that's what I'll call this, the spine, the back part. There's about the ruler. There's three inches of clearance between this piece of wood and the back side of this bracelet. And you think, what's it matter? Well, I can get my hands under there. And in instances like this, when you get down to the end of your bracelet, that fed now, I'll show you. I'll flip it sideways so you can see the profile. You see how much clearance there is? Now, I'll be honest. That fid, it's not enough clearance to get it in there perfectly. But, it's more so than many of the jigs that only have an inch, maybe an inch and a half of clearance. There's a lot of clearance. So, you get your hands back there and you can work. And, you know, on this one, I can actually turn the, a little bit. And I can get that fit in there if need be. And I'm not fighting with the back side, the spine piece, especially some of those jigs that are real, real wide and then there's no clearance between here. You can't get in there to get that fit in there if, you know, it's one of those weaves where you need to, you know, use the fit to get the end of it done before you take it off the jig, right? That's just something I like. But and the way I've done that, is when I initially made one of these, all I had was this block here. And I had my buckle attached to this block. Well, I slowly realized I wanted some clearance back here for all these reasons. So I put two more small pieces of wood. And there's a screw. These two screws right here are running all the way through those pieces of wood. So it's holding it all together. But because of the way it's done, it does bow. When I put pressure on there, it pulls this piece down and this piece up a little bit. They bow in together. Now you can't see it on camera, 
but these two pieces they will bow in together but like I show in a lot of my videos how much pressure I put on this when I go to take this thing off you can see it snap and you'll see this move a little bit right now I didn't pull this one as tight as I normally do but when I take it off this jig just to watch and you'll see what I'm talking about okay so I'm gonna get this out of the way and you see right here where this connection point is right now when I release this pressure sometimes it's so tight I can't release the pressure and pull it off I actually have to loosen the sliding piece the carriage up and relieve some of that tension before I can get it off but I think I'll be able to get this one off because I didn't pull it as tight but just watch this whole thing kind of bow it'll snap it back into place and then look at the comparison of how much room is between in that connection point that's almost about five eighths of an inch half an inch I guess never measured it um, but you see what I'm saying so this piece does bow right? and there's nothing wrong with that that gentleman, when he said that, I was thinking, so? But he was trying, he was making it out, out as if that's going to cause your bracelet measurement to be off. Well, not necessarily. If you, if you take that into consideration when you do your setup, and I, I'm going to throw this out there. When I do one of these, a lot of you have seen this, and I've said this in some videos, but this is the way I do it. How do I make this crisp? quick crash course. I put my buckle up here. I, I put the buckle at the bottom. Then I come back and I, I loosely do a core setup. Get my accent cord, whatever, get it all in place. Then I'll come back and I'll measure like you're supposed to between where these, where these two buckles connect, the connection point, to the connection point down here. Okay. Now, it's specific for my jig. Now, if you have a jig that doesn't bow, it, this will not work. But if you have one that bows, after you use it, you'll begin to realize this variable number. For me, it's about a quarter of an inch, right? So what I do is, if I need to set my jig measurement from this connection point to this connection point at eight inches for the bracelet to fit properly, what I will do is I will set it up loose core strand loose core setup at seven and three quarter inches a quarter inch shy of what I want it to actually be then once I get the, that, that distance determined quarter inch shy of what I want it to be then I will come back and hand tighten that loose core setup uh, I'll work through it and tighten up all the hitches, taking out all the slack. That way it's hand tight. Then I will come back, loosen up the restraining bolt for the carriage, the slide piece, and I will pull it as tight as I can. And I will tighten up that bolt. And what it does is it puts tension on those core strands, tight as a piano string. Bing, bing, bing. The, like I said, I, I've worked with this jig enough that I know that I will it will give me that quarter inch that I set it shy of, right? I wanted it ultimately to be at an eight inch measurement, so I set it up at a seven and three quarter. Once I hand tighten the core strands and I crank the tension down, it tightens everything up and it stretches and it gives me that extra quarter of an inch. Like I say, if you make your own jig, you have a jig, and it does bow, just work with it, and you'll see. And yours might not be a quarter of an inch. It might be an eighth of an inch. It might be, you know, three-eighths of an inch. It may be half an inch. It just depends. But I've done this one enough with this jig, and I know that I can get that quarter of an inch. The bow factor, if you will. Right? So it's not a bad thing, you just have to learn to work with it. And in fact, I have designed my jig specifically to do it that way. Right? That's why when I take it off, you see there's a gap. Why? Right? Because it bows in on itself. That's not a bad thing. You just have to learn to work with it. Use it to your advantage. Don't think of it as, well, that's, that jig's no good. 
No, you just learn to work with it. Right? Okay, now, now that I gave my, I, I'll get off my soapbox and I'll show you how I finished this. I'll get this off here before we get the jig out of the way. I'll say this because my desk is probably a little dusty and dirty. And especially since I'm using some dark colors, what I'll do a lot of times just kind of sweep, get any kind of dust that may be up there off, net, dust, whatever. So that way when I go to lay my bracelet down, because most often when we go to do the back side, we're going to flip it over. And the display side is going to be on the surface of the desk. We don't want a bunch of dirt and lint on there. Minimal. Okay? So, what we'll do. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and I'll show you how I finish this one off. Let's zoom in. See if I can get this light over here so you can see. Okay, we've already got, like I said, we've already got the two accents. Right? The gray anthracite, the dark gray it accent color, they're already on the back side. Now this one, the main working end, let's get them up out of the way. That main working end, like I said, we're just going to bring it across the top and it's going to fill in this gap where that core string can be seen and it's going to create this border. And we're just going to bring it around to the back like this. Right? Okay. So now we got all of them on the back side. So we're going to look and see how we're going to finish this. Now what I'm going to do this is the way I'm going to do this. The way, what I'm going to try to do. I know you probably, probably hard to say. Let me get the light over here. Okay, we see these. My handy dandy laser pericord pointer I have here. There's, there's two pieces of gray right here. I'm going to run it up under. I'm going to back weave all three of these cords up under those two pieces. So I'm going to go under here and I'm going to come out in this groove right here. Now, because I pulled this thing pretty tight, it's going it might be a challenge, right? Okay, so let's go do that. Now, what we're going to do, make sure that black one is wrapped around that front, like we said. So keep it over here on this side. Now, these two, we're just going to run them up under there. And like I said in some of my other videos about the stitching, go ahead and make sure you don't have a twist in this line when you go to do this. That way you're not trying to get the twist out because this is going to be tight. But we're running up under there. Like I say, this is the one we're working with, right? And it's on that side. So I'm going to put it on that side. This other gray is on the side closest to me. So I'm going to put it on this side. Make sense? So I'm going to just run it up under there. See that? This first one, it'll go through there pretty easy. But once you start getting the second and the third one, yeah, it might be a little tight. You might have to struggle with it and all that. So get it on there. See, what I'm saying is you don't want to twist in that piece of gray. This, this piece of gray, where it goes up under right here, you don't want to twist in it. You're trying to keep this, because it's going to create this big bulk, bump right here, a lump. You try to keep that as small as you can. If you got a twist in it, it's going to cause that bump to be real thick right there. That's why I say keep that twist up and pull it. Okay, now we're going to take the other accent cord and we're going to run it up under there, back weave it up this side because it's on this side of the bracelet. See? That one goes through there pretty easy. So I can tell it's a little tighter. I can get it through there, no problem. It doesn't look like there's a twist in it. We pull it. Yeah, it's not twisted. Okay, now those two are finished. Now this black one again. Make sure that we wrap it around first. That way it creates that border. Instead of having this accent terminate right there at the bottom, we're going to do it like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to run it up under there also. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it all the way over here to this side and run it up under there. If I can get it to go up under there right there. See that? Now this one, I can tell. I can already tell. It's tight. that 
twist out. Okay, now we see how it's not where we want it. We got to make sure we get it where we want it. Right up there, not down here on the. So you see. Right? Yeah, that's where we want it, right there. Now, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull the other two. And that's, that's it for that side. Now, what I'm going to do, like I was telling a. Uh, a friend the other day, a, a lady friend the other day. How you doing? I won't mention you by name, but how you doing? Um, I told her, I said, when you know you're going to stitch the bracelet, I say this in all my videos, but I, I, I personally told her this because she was trying to do one of the bracelets I had made and doing the stitch pattern I did. And I told her, I said, before you, when you go to cut and burn your excess off, I said, don't cut and burn them the final burn. That was that big hard hard piece of plastic that you create will potentially, can potentially get in the way of where your stitching needle needs to go through, right? So what you do is maybe an inch, inch and a half, two inches, whatever, and you, you cut it off, you cut them off, right? Alright. That way you don't have all, you don't have all that excess getting in the way when you're trying to stitch when you get to this point, you don't have to do this, but I do. I don't like this. So, you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is just put some heat on it. That way, it'll seal the end of that cord. And that's it. Now, eventually, those will get cut off. But we do it that way so we can still get our, around and through the bracelet when we do the stitching. Right. Now all this is scrap. Okay, now what we're going to do for this other piece, let me back out and I'll show you this. Let me take my fids off my, all these loose ends, scrap ends. Put these over here where they go. Okay, now, for this piece right here, right, I told you I'd leave it in the beginning, I told you I'd leave it long enough so when I put this fit on it, I'll have room to fold the fit back over itself and back weave it into the bracelet, right? And what I'll try to do, is most likely it'll work on this one too, is when I'm going to stitch it, wherever I back weave this into the bracelet, that's the same, and anchor it, if you will, is going to be the same place I anchor my stitching cords when I start stitching. But let's see, we're gonna look at this. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna see if I can't show you this. I do this on quite a few of these weaves that have this this an offset working in and you have this nub here at the end. What I'm gonna do, hopefully this will make sense. Instead of taking this nub and just running it like that and back weaving it what I'm actually going to do is run it back through this first piece. That's the that's that little stopper knot, if you will, or that tightening knot that I put when I do a four string core. I put it on most of all my core setups, right? But I'm going to run it back through this loop right here. Now, it can be a little tight, but it can be done. You can either use your knotter's tool to fit or whatever. Kind of loosen up that loop right there just a little bit. And you can come in here. I know you can't see this, but where this cord is going through that loop, you can see it right here. If you can get up under it just a little bit, you can kind of get it started. Does that make sense? Do we see what I'm doing there? And you can get it and you can pull it back through. Now, now here's the thing. That loop that you pulled it through, see, you got a big gap in it. So what you got to do is pull this and it'll pull the slack out of that loop. Now we take that and we, now we attach our fid and we back with it into the back of the bracelet. 
I'm gonna back wave this one just like I did at the bottom up under two pieces of this gray that's all I'm gonna do why two because two is better than one I guess I don't know you can do it under the one it really doesn't matter but I'm gonna do it under the first two Right. I'll pull it through. All right, and just like before, I know that one's not real long, but it's longer than it needs to be, and we don't, that's going to just get in our way when we try to stitch. So I'm going to cut it off a little bit, leave it about inch and a half, inch, inch and a half, two inches. Sometimes you want it, I say, I say inch, inch and a half, two inches, because sometimes it just depends on the nature of the weave. You want it a little bit longer because as you're stitching and working with it, it will have a tendency to want to come loose and come, instead of being back woven, it'll back itself out. And if it's a real short piece, it may back itself out completely. And then you got to get it back up under there, right? That's why I leave a little bit, sometimes about two inches. But on this one, I don't think it's going to, it's, it's not going to work itself out. And plus, when you do this, and you burn that end, and it creates those little hard edges around that burn, that, that will keep it from completely going back through a lot of times, right? But that's it. That's how I do this. That's that's the bracelet itself. Now I'm gonna make another one and show you how to do a, the stitching, but I'll give you a little sneak peek on it. See, I already see little pieces of lint. I don't know if you can see that there, yeah, right there. You can see that on that camera from just being on the desk. But this is that's how I make a widow maker. And this is black and anthracite. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna stitch it. And I'll show you. I showed you that other one earlier, right here. Right, smoke gray, add some purple and imperial red. And I just so you know, the stitching right here, the side spiral, as I call it, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. It's pretty quick. Doesn't take a lot of cord, um, but it, it adds a nice, as, excuse me, nice aspect to this bracelet. But uh, that's one piece of stitching going all the way down that side. Now that, in this case, it's a piece of 95. And then the same one on this side, it's a, it's a separate, another piece of 95 running down, right? Now, the micro cord is crisscrossing here in the middle over the uh, acid blue. That is one big long piece, long piece, right? And it'll take you some time to do it. These two side pieces, they don't take very long. Pretty simple, pretty easy. This one's not hard, it's just a very long piece, and you have to, you know, every one of them gets one. So, yeah, but that'll be in the next video, I'll show how to do those. I may even do two, two videos, one for the side part, and then one for the middle aspect, but we'll see. But now that you know how to weave it, stay tuned and check out the video on how to stitch it. But, that's how I weave a widow maker but with that i'll end this one like i end them all keep it neat keep it clean and keep it tight happy weaving folks